Now today we're looking at trouble code P0411, which is part of the air injection system. Now if you have this trouble code, chances are it's with this little guy right here. This is an air control solenoid valve. So let's jump right over to the vehicle and I'll explain how all of this works. So we're essentially looking at two different components. The first one is the air control valve. Now if you look and follow this rubber hose, Underneath here we have a metal tubing. A little hard to see, but you follow that tubing and then eventually it leads to this guy right here. Now this is an air control valve, just like this, but it's an air control valve vacuum control solenoid valve. In plain English, there's a little plunger in there that moves back and forth. And this system works with the air pump and I'll have more videos on the air pump very, very shortly, but now let's test the unit. Now chances are if you have trouble code 411, it's this little solenoid valve. So let's test it. So following back to the air control valve, we have a rubber line. So just simply remove it and then we should have vacuum. So we'll start the vehicle and you should feel a very, very slight vacuum. Now when you do this test, just make sure that the engine is cold. Don't perform this test if the engine is warm. So you see how small the vacuum is? It's very, very small. And you wanna make sure that you have this vacuum. Now if you're not receiving vacuum at this point, of course check the vacuum lines. So we have one right here, we have another one right here. Of course leading to the solenoid valve. And then also if you follow any of these lines, you want to check all of these rubber lines because if you have a hairline leak, then the vacuum will leak out and not get to where it needs to go. So make sure you check all of your vacuum lines. Now the other thing to check if you're not receiving vacuum is the fuse and we will do that in a moment. But let's first assume that you are getting vacuum and you have this trouble code. So let's verify and test to see if this is working or not. So to do that, I'm simply disconnecting the harness connector. So here at the three o'clock position, there's a tab. Just pressing in the tab, pull on, pull on the body. Okay, and now we need to do something called a continuity test. It's very, very simple. You just need a digital multimeter. If you happen to need one, as always, I'll have a link in the description box below for this specific one off Amazon, which is $23. So that being said, you have a number of different functions on the meter. So we want the continuity setting. So that looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, super simple. And then just plug in your leads that come with the meter. Now continuity simply means two points, make a connection. Super, super simple. The other thing I'm using is a probe kit. Now these are really nice to have. It's not necessary. The flip side is you can simply use a paper clip, but this makes the job a lot easier. So now I'm just using the probe kit, or this one probe in this case. And again, if you are using a paper clip, make sure it's thin enough because you do not want to damage the metal prongs inside here. So let's first start with this guy right here. Now with the multimeter, your black lead goes to body ground. That's any good metal point on the vehicle. The exhaust manifold is a really good spot. And then the red lead is going to that paper clip, or in my case, the probe. And we should have continuity. Now if you're not receiving continuity, don't worry about it. Just simply test the other prong. So in my case, this prong has continuity, this one does not. So again, make sure you test both prongs and verify if you do indeed have continuity or not. So once again, if you are receiving a vacuum, and you have continuity at the harness connector, then you simply need to remove and replace the solenoid valve. Very, very easy, let me show you how. So we have a fastener right here, and now you can remove the solenoid valve from its mount, and then you just have a little hookup right here. And this is just a hose removal plier. Really nice tool to have to break these hoses loose without damaging them. And if you look closely, we have one more in the bottom of the solenoid valve, and then we can remove it from the vehicle. And there's your solenoid valve. Now, if you are replacing the part, always purchase the factory components. So in this case, Denso made in Japan, you're much better off versus your aftermarket parts at Advance Auto, 
AutoZone, so on and so forth. This will last a lot longer. So that sorts out the problem if you are receiving a vacuum and continuity at the harness connector. Simply replace the solenoid valve and you're back in business. But what if you are not receiving a vacuum here? Let's first check the fuse that controls this solenoid valve. Now let's start by grabbing a fuse puller. Now in some vehicles you may find a fuse puller underneath the fuse and relay box here. Typically it's the one that's located under the hood. In this case I don't have one. It looks like it probably sat right there. It's just missing. Now for this S2000, it happens to be fuse number six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This 15 amp fuse right here. So you just simply pull it. Okay. Look at the fuse. There we go. And if it's blown, just simply replace it. Now for most vehicles, you'll find a list showing all the fuses inside the cabin. On this S2000, it just doesn't have a cover. So don't go crazy. Most vehicles, you'll find a list just like this one. So if the fuse is good, the final test is to verify that power is getting to the harness connector that powers up the solenoid. So simply remove, once again, the harness connector and we want to verify that power is getting here. So multimeter, you want the volts DC setting on the meter. Make sure it's set at DC and not AC. So now I'm just turning on the ignition. Do not start the vehicle, just turn the ignition switch on. And then once again, the black lead goes to body ground. Red lead is going to the harness connector. So let me zoom in, insert your paper clip, or in this case, the probe. And let's see if we have battery voltage. Hold on, there we go. Now in this case, we do not have battery voltage. This is 17 MV, stands for millivolts. So that is nearly not enough power. Let's check the other prong. So remove the probe into the other one. And now we are receiving 12 volts worth of power. So that verifies that we have good wiring and everything is working correctly. Now, if you're not receiving power at either prong, then you have a wiring issue. Chances are you have a break right at the rear of the harness connector. Over time, if someone has pulled on this location hard enough, it will dislodge the connection. So just check right back here. Chances are that's where your problem will be. And that's how you tackle this trouble code. Chances are it's the solenoid valve itself that needs to be replaced. But always check these other things, otherwise you're just throwing money out the window. See what's going on, get your car back up and running, and as always, thank you for watching.